In February 2010, the McStay family vanished without a trace. They left no evidence, no sign of a struggle, and no indication of their whereabouts. Three years later, their bodies were found. But despite an overwhelming number of theories, the truth remains shrouded in uncertainty. Summer McStay, Joseph Sr. McStay, and their two children, four-year-old Gianni and three-year-old Joey Jr., were the quintessential all-American family, successful, tight-knit, and with a circle that loved and cherished them. The family lived in Fallbrook, California, and Joseph operated a successful business called Earth Inspired Products, which he ran with his trusted business partner, Charles Chase Merritt. On the evening of the McStay's disappearance, February 4, 2010, around 7.47 p.m., a neighbor's surveillance camera captured what was thought to be the family's vehicle. However, its occupants were not visible. It was roughly an hour later that Joseph Sr. placed a call to his business partner, which went straight to voicemail. His cell phone then pinged at a tower in Fallbrook. Days later, after the McStay family members had received no word from them, they began to grow concerned. It wasn't that unusual for the McStays to occasionally go off the grid and take short vacations, so initially, it was thought that perhaps they had simply gone on a trip. A week passed before Michael McStay, Joseph's brother, decided to visit the family's home to check that they were all right. When he arrived, he crawled through an open window and found the residence empty and all the food in the kitchen rotting. He also found Summer McStay's prescription glasses, an unusual thing to leave behind. The family also seemed to have left their dogs unattended, but there was no evidence a struggle had taken place or that anything was out of the ordinary. Nonetheless, on the 15th of February, Michael filed a missing persons report. After running their details through the system, law enforcement officials discovered that McStay's vehicle had been towed on the 8th of February from a parking lot near the border of Mexico. This further fueled the theory that the family had simply taken a trip. Security footage released from the San Diego Sheriff's Department even showed a clip of a family resembling the McStays walking across the border. Upon further investigation and examination of the McStay family computer, police found search results relating to traveling to Mexico, as well as queries such as what documents were needed for children traveling to Mexico and Spanish language lessons. By all accounts, Nothing seemed amiss apart from the lack of contact with friends and family. Yet, to those who knew the McStays, this trip to Mexico seemed strange as Summer and Joseph had always expressed a desire to avoid the country due to the issue of wars. All credit card activity had also stopped. Reportedly, although the McStays had a large sum in savings, nothing was withdrawn beforehand in preparation for the trip. According to Summer's sister, her passport had also expired making it unlikely she would have been able to cross the border into Mexico. Interpol was notified to be on the lookout for the family, and from then onwards there were no developments in the case aside from unconfirmed sightings in Mexico. Law enforcement felt the narrative that the family had voluntarily fled to Mexico was accurate, but this all changed when in November 2013, almost four years after the family disappeared, an off-road motorcyclist found what appeared to be parts of a skull in the desert in Victorville, California. As the motorcyclist continued to inspect the scene, they found two shallow graves. Each grave contained the skeletal remains of an adult and one small child. By the time forensic investigators got their hands on the remains, there was no viable DNA evidence to confirm the identities aside from dental records which were eventually confirmed to belong to the McStay family. A sledgehammer was also found at the site, and it was announced that the cause of death for all four McStay family members was believed to be blunt force trauma. After the case was ruled a homicide, the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office took over. At first, all email records of the McStay family were examined, and two suspects emerged. Summer's ex-boyfriend, and Joseph's business partner, Dan Cavanaugh, who had been fired shortly before the disappearance. But soon, both men were cleared of any suspicion. An ex-girlfriend of Cavanaugh's claimed that he had confessed to abducting and murdering the McStays. 
Yet no evidence was found tying him to the crime and her testimony was inconsistent with the facts of the case itself. It was later revealed that Kavanaugh had been caught hacking into Joseph's financial accounts and that, after the murders, he profited by gaining almost $200,000. Without much to convict Dan, police then turned to the next person who last had contact with the McStays, Charles Merritt. Merritt had claimed when interviewed that on the evening Joseph Sr. had called him, he had ignored the call because he was watching a movie. He was also made to take a lie detector test, which he passed. But Merritt had a suspicious history, having been convicted previously for burglary and receiving stolen property. It also turned out that Merritt had been stealing funds from the business he ran with Joseph McStay. He also owed Joseph more than $42,000 due to a botched job in 2009. Now, the police had their motive. Merritt was arrested. Investigators believed that Joseph was on the verge of cutting Merritt out of the business, and according to friends, he had even confessed to this plan. The theory was that Merritt couldn't allow this to happen, so he abducted the family, murdered them, and buried them in the desert. Police had also examined the McStay's vehicle and found DNA on the steering column and gear shift, DNA which matched that of Charles Merritt. His cell phone records at the time of the disappearance also placed him within the vicinity of where the McStays were eventually found. The theory developed that after killing the family, Merritt drove their vehicle to San Isidro and abandoned it, before making his way back to their home where he searched the travel details to Mexico on their computer to make it look as though the family had voluntarily left. Prosecutors believed they had more than enough for a conviction. At his trial, which lasted for 50 days in January 2019, Merritt was found guilty of murdering the McStay family, despite denying any involvement. He was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Joseph McStay and the death penalty for the murders of Summer, Gianni, and Joey Jr. But the story doesn't end there. As it would turn out, the McStays had many enemies, or at least those who had motives for harming them. Summer's ex-boyfriend, who had been cleared of suspicion, had sent an email claiming he'd love her forever. He had also been arrested for threatening a neighbor and her daughter. Additionally, the new husband of Joseph's ex-wife threatened to muzzle Summer and beat up Joseph Sr. Joseph was also having issues with a business associate who had maintained the company's website. The man had sent threats to Joseph, stating that he would destroy the site and the company. He was also found to have tried to advertise to sell the business out from under Joseph. While Merritt's defense tried to introduce this man as a potential suspect in the trial, they were barred by the prosecution. The McStay family members still believe there's more to the case and that there are likely more suspects involved, and as of now, there are no definitive answers. In Merritt's opinion, all the evidence against him was purely circumstantial and the real killers have yet to be brought to justice. Despite the conclusion reached in the trial of Charles Merritt for the murders of the McStay family, questions continue to linger, casting shadows over the case. While Merritt sits behind bars, maintaining his innocence, the narrative of the crime remains incomplete, leaving room for speculation and doubt. Until all avenues of inquiry are thoroughly explored and every shadow of doubt dispelled, the search for justice for Summer, Joseph Sr., Gianni, and Joey Jr. McStay will persist, casting a long shadow over the hearts of those touched by their tragic fate. The question remains, did Charles Merritt kill the McStays? Was it a disgruntled business associate, the new lover of an ex, or an old flame-seeking revenge? We may never know.